Hello everyone, welcome to another video of this uh, fabulous series that we have started. It. It's uh, uh, titled Scripture Twisting 101, where we take one passage that our Muslim friends tend to use out of context and refute that passage in order to help clarify it to them and also help those who are reaching out to Muslims when they hear these passages back from them, they'll be able to use this as one of their tools. Now, the next passage which we will be covering today comes from the Gospel of John. It's John 5.30 and it reads, I can do nothing on my own. This is Jesus speaking. I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who <clears throat> sent me. Sam, you have no idea how many times I hear this yeah, over yeah. and over again. Usually this, cite, <clears throat> this is cited along with John 5.19, which is partially cited, where Jesus says, <clears throat> the son can do nothing of himself, <clears throat> but what he sees the father do. Now, let me first explain what we believe as Trinitarians. We do not believe that Jesus Christ is a renegade God who acts independently from the father. We believe the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one God. Because they're one God, they never act independently. <clears throat> they only work in perfect union with one another. At most, what you're proving here is that Jesus Christ does not act independently from the Father. And in fact, if you read the context, what he goes on to show is, because he doesn't act independently from the Father, he can only do what the Father does, and yet the things that the Father does, which the Son does likewise, proves the Son must be just as much God as the Father is. Exactly. So let's look at the context, and the context basically self-explanatory. I'm going to start, because we don't have too much time. John 5, we'll start at 16. <clears throat> Pay attention to the words of the Lord, and how even the Jews understood Jesus correctly. John 5, 16, we'll read all the way. Right. So the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him. Now notice why. Because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. He had healed the man paralyzed on the Sabbath day. Right. Jesus answered them. Now notice how Jesus justifies his working on the Sabbath. Jesus answered them, My Father <clears throat> is working still, and I'm working. In other words, my Father doesn't take a rest on the Sabbath day. If he did, who'd be sustaining the universe? So the Father's a actively involved in sustaining creation and therefore is working on the Sabbath, yet no Jew would accuse God, the Father, of violating the Sabbath. He goes, likewise, I'm working. Now notice how the Jews understood that. So the Jews sought even more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, as far as they were concerned, but also said that God was his own father making himself equal with God. Now, let's break down the reasoning real quickly. They realize for Jesus to claim what he did, he was claiming an equality with the Father that no creature could claim because obviously God the Father is exempt from the rules of the Sabbath. But only he's exempt because he's a sustainer. He has to work. But Jesus says, in the same manner that the Father can work on the Sabbath without violating, violating it, I too have that same right. So they correctly reason, in order for Jesus to make that claim, he has to be equal to the Father, which they took to be blasphemy because they weren't seeing God. They were seeing a flesh and blood Jew because his deity was veiled. Now to reinforce the fact that Jesus is claiming to be one with the Father in essence, notice 19 to 20. <clears throat> Then Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of Himself. And most ancient Trinitarians stop there. See, He can't do anything of Himself. God doesn't speak this way. Let's finish it. But what He sees the Father do. For whatever He does, the Father does, likewise the <laughs> Son does. Now, my question to both of you is this. <clears throat> I know our time is fleeting. Which creature could say, I can only do what God does, and whatever God does, I do it in the same manner? No one. Does that sound like a creature? Not yeah. a single prophet ever it, said that. It, no, it's just, it's just amazing that, that you have a verse that's used to show that Jesus <laughs> isn't God, and if you finish the verse, it's a clear claim to be God, right? I mean, right. You have, so, sometimes you have to read the surrounding verses. Yeah. Here, you just have to finish the verse. Of, that's of, why of, we're for those bringing up 19, yeah, yeah. 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 For, <laughs> that, that's if we're going to start with, uh, with uh, 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 chapter 5, verse 19, the, yeah. the cha chapter 5, verse 30. Yeah, um, that's what well, I can take uh, out of context. Yeah. So notice one he's saying, I don't act independently, but in perfect unit with the Father, and I can do whatever he does. And just to make sure that the things he does, only God can do. I'm not going to read all of it. I'm going to go to 21. Look what he says here. For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. This doesn't sound like a creature who thinks he's not equal to the Father. Right. Again, for the sake of time, I'm going to skip to 25. Okay, 25. Notice this. This is mind-blowing, because I'm going to compare these statements to what the Quran says about Allah. 25. Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming, 
and is now here, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. Then say the Father's voice or the Spirit's voice, even though He acts in perfect union both. The voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. Now skipping to 28, 29. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming, the last day, the day of judgment. The hour is coming, in which all who are in the graves will hear His voice. Who? The ones in the graves will hear the voice of the Son of God, according to 25, and come out. So notice what Jesus just claimed. Amen. The last hour, the last day, the day of resurrection, He, by the power of the sound of His sovereign voice, will physically resurrect both the righteous and, and evildoers to stand in judgment before Him. Who will do it? He will do it by the power of His voice. And when? At the hour. Jesus confirms the fact that he's the one who's going to raise the dead <clears throat> at the last day in John 6, 39 to 44. And I'm going to sum up real quick. John 6, 39 to 44, notice what Jesus says. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all of whom he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. This is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life. And I, Jesus saying, I personally will raise them up at the last day. Now notice what the Jews say. The Jews then murmured about him because he said, I'm the bread which came down from heaven. They said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it that he then says, I have come down from heaven? So they understood that he's literally coming That's right. down from That's heaven. Exactly. How? We know your parents, man. You're a flesh and blood Jew. What do you mean you came down from heaven? Notice what our Lord says. Jesus therefore answered them, do not murmur among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father has sent me, draws him, and I will raise him up at the last point. So Jesus says, at the last day, not last point, I'm sorry, last day, he will resurrect the dead, raise believers, give them immortality, and by the power of the sound of his voice, all in their graves will come out and live and stand before him in judgment. According to the Quran, who does this at the hour? Chapter 22, verses 6 to 7. 22 of the Quran, 6 to 7. This is because Allah... He is the truth. One of his names, Al-Haq, the truth. I'll get to that in a minute. And it is he who gives life to the dead. And it is he who is able to do all things. Now watch verse 7. And surely the hour is coming. There is no doubt about it. And certainly Allah will resurrect those who are in the graves. Wow. That sure sounds like Jesus' words in John 5, 21. Right. The Son gives life to whom he wants. The voice of the Son will raise the dead out of their graves at the hour. Everything the Quran says, Allah and only Allah will do. And on top of that, he's called the truth, which in John 14, 6, Jesus answered and said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So my question is this, what kind of attributes must Jesus have that by the sound of his voice, the, those who are physically dead will be raised to life at the last day, at the last hour, to stand in judgment before Him. He has to be omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. All of them. And that's in that chapter of John 5.30, which was quoted out of context. What clear evidence could you provide to show that the historical Jesus claims to be not independent from the Father, but in perfect, inseparable union with the Father, and can do whatever the Father does, because He's just as much God as the Father is, because they're not two gods, but two persons who happen to be one God. Amen. And so, uh, Amen. Uh, uh, you're right, this is why we call this Scripture twisting, when people would take something where Jesus is claiming over and over and over again in a passage to be God, and take something out of there, completely cross everything out of the chapter. They, they take a sharpie and cross out everything else in the chapter and just leave one little part. When you read that actual little part with the surrounding context, I can of my own self do nothing. Well, do Christians believe that Jesus can do something on his own, separately from the yeah, Father? Absolutely. No, we don't. In, in the sense in which he's meaning it here, he's claiming he's not some separate God. So Christians would say amen to that. But uh, how you can take this passage and rip it out and, and say, see, Jesus is claiming to be nothing but a good Muslim prophet here. Yeah. This is another passage where um, when people like Ahmed Didat and Zakir Naik quote this, and I'm pretty sure they've read the surrounding verses, yeah. they know, they know this contradicts Islam over and over and over and over and over again. They know it. 
Right. And yet they tell their followers, you see, this proves that the yeah. Islamic view of Jesus is correct. So when a Muslim who, who's just, he's listened to Zakir Naik and he thinks he trusts Zakir Naik and he thinks that Zakir Naik or DDOT are, are truthful men, trustworthy men, and he quotes this to me, then, then you know, I can take him seriously. Okay, you're wrong, but at least you're sincere. Yeah. You're sincere. You really right. believe that this is saying this. Let's go ahead and, re and read through the passage. And I've done, I've done this with Muslims. But when a Muslim apologist who has read this quotes this and completely massacres the text, yeah. uh, it becomes clear that uh, some, some of these guys are, are uh, just aren't, they're not honest. And notice once again, Jesus again affirms God is the Father and He is His unique beloved Son, all of which contradicts the Quran because Allah is a Father to no one. Jesus isn't His Son. How in the world then are you quoting this to prove That's that right. you need to become a Muslim? And also this proves really uh, basically the oneness of God because if yep. God is one, the two persons here, Father and Son, are not going to contradict each other. Exactly. And the, yeah. that's the unity uh, between basically the Godhead members. Well, uh, again, hopefully everybody's enjoying this series because you can see why we're calling it Scripture Twisting for this reason, because things are taken completely out of context. And some of you, maybe even many of you, are being deceived into believing what you're being told. So we encourage you, go and inspect everything that Sam said, everything that David says, everything that I am saying these days. You're without excuse. You can find anything you want. You can you can download the whole Bible if you want, you know. So go and inspect it and read it for yourself and send us your comments. You're always welcome to interact with us. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron on patreon.com forward slash International.